Thursday, January 18th. Now, the thing is, this girl Maggie in our school in fifth grade at Sacred Heart, she'd convinced us boys at the lunch table that souls, animal souls particularly, but souls in general, were all a question of faith. So you, you, you couldn't pinpoint where they were and, and really what they were about. Now, Baxter, he said, since there are lots of religions, there, there must be lots of different kinds of souls. So we were still curious about this, especially around the idea of animals. But, well, in, in our parish, there had been this priest, uh, Father Gallagher, and you could talk to him about anything. Uh, thing is, he got moved on by the archdiocese, and now we had a couple of other priests, and they, they just weren't approachable. Uh, we didn't feel comfortable about talking to these priests about uh, animal souls. So, so back home, I brought it up to my folks. Now, Tessie, Tessie, she believed that the difference between a, a person's soul and an animal's soul is people's souls are all beat up because people are, you know, they do bad things and their souls get nipped away at and gnawed on and bruised and all that sort of thing. Uh, Walt, he believed that, uh, well, that an animal is a soulful being and, and it's in many ways just naturally close to God because that's why animals don't practice a religion. They're already in a kind of a religious life is what he believed. In fact, he said he felt their souls, animal souls, look like a little feathery, furry thing that was deep in them. And I think my sister Terry liked that idea because she said that animals' souls were like little furry bunny rabbits and that when the animal passes on, the little the little soulful bunny rabbit just goes off to, I don't know, bunny rabbit heaven or something. It turned out it was my Uncle Mal who had the most to say about this. We were at the paint shop, myself, I was there with Uncle Mal, and we were busting up these milkbone dog biscuits for Mike, the shop dog. Mike is an old dog, and he needs help uh, eating his biscuits. And we were breaking them at the shop table, and Mike was watching me very closely. And uh, Uncle Mal said, well, first of all, uh, you were you were smart not to bring this up with them priests in your church there. Also, you see, because your religion that you're going to at that church, that's a, those are Dominican Catholics, and they're focused entirely on people, not, not animals. What you want to do to talk about animal souls, go up to, to Casti Monastery. Now, now you've got a couple of Franciscan brothers up there. They, they know all about talking about animals and religion, you know, because they come down from uh, St. Francis. Now, he was, he was a saint who could, who could talk to the animals, who could understand what they were saying. Oh, sure. I, I think St. Francis' uh, heaven is just all full of animals wherever he is. Uh-huh. I looked down at Mike. Mike's an old dog. He's a black cocker spaniel, has a lot of gray around the muzzle, and... And looked at Mike and I had some of the little biscuits for him. I said, so, so Uncle Mal, you, you feel Mike here has a, a pretty good soul. Oh, Mike, he has, a, he has a wonderful soul because, well, I'll tell you why. Because, you see, his soul's in great shape because the animal world don't know nothing about sin. Huh. Yeah. All right. We'll see you again tomorrow.